Okay, so now we're going to combine our adjustment and correction factors, and I think you guys can probably see where we're going with this. Um, important to uh, just discuss again, NEC Table 31015B. Uh, by now, you guys should be pros at it. We got our wire size over here, wire size over here, copper in the middle. I'm sorry, aluminum over here, copper over here. We have our types of insulation in three different columns, uh, types of insulation in three different columns to what they correspond with, whether it be copper or aluminum. Then the three insulations also correspond to the temperature rating, 60, 75, and 90, right? 60, 75, and 90. Remember, these temperature ratings coincide with this ambient temperature correction factors chart, this NEC Table 31015B2A. All right, and then our ampacity reduction uh, because of current kind of conductors or our adjustment factor is 31015B3A. So remember, we have adjustment factor, we have correction factor, and then we have our if the world was perfect chart, right? If we met, if we had a conductor that was good up to 2000 volts, if we had um, not more than three current carrying conductors, and we had an ambient temperature of 86. We would be in great shape, but we don't. So now we have to apply the adjustment factors. In this case, we're going, because we're doing adjustment and correction, we have to take into account that we have more than three current carrying conductors, and we are also going to have an ambient temperature, which is more than 30 degrees or 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay? Um, so our first problem here says, what size USE copper wire is needed to feed a 100 amp sub panel? The subpanel will be fed through a conduit with a total of seven conductors and run through an attic that could reach a max temperature of 128 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. We're going to start this just like we did the other um, with the adjustment factor. We're going to start with adjustment and go from there. So now remember, we're looking for 100 amps and we want to, we have to use USE because that's what it's spec or, or specifying. So we're looking for USE up top here. And uh, that's UST2, which is not USE. Here's USE. All right, we're looking for USE, and we need 100 amps. Well, look at that. We have 100 amps at number three wire. So we're over here. I'm going to write number three, USE, okay? And that's good to 100 amps. But the first issue we run into is that we know, I read that we have more than three current carrying conductors. We have seven. So now I'm going to go to this chart, and I see I'm allowed 7 to 9 at 70%. And remember, do the 0.7 for the 70%, so I'm going to take my amperage total and times it by 0.7. So over here, I'm going to apply the adjustment factor of 0.7. So um, I think I know what that answer is, but I always like to make sure. So I'm going to do 100 times... 0.7 is equal to 70 amps. Okay? Far below the 100 amps we need. Okay? So now we just got to keep working what we did before. Um, so I just did a number one. I'm sorry, number three. Where would it go? At 100 amps. So now we're going to jump up to a number two at 115. Number two, USE at 115 amps. Remember your correction, I mean your adjustment factor will not change. So we're going to go with 115 times 0.7 equals 80.5. Still not anywhere near what we need for amperage. So now I'm going to go to a number one, right? Um, just because I've been doing this, number one is good to 130. So USE is good to 130 amps times the 70% adjustment factor. So I'm going to take my 130 amps times the 70% equals 91. All right, getting closer to somewhere, but not where we need to be. All right? If I'm remembering correctly, we still need 100 amps. Yep. So now we're going to go to the number 1-aught, right, USE. And 1-aught USE is good to 150 amps times 0.7 is equal to. So 
So, same thing, 150 times 0.7 is equal to 105. As I sit here doing this, I want you guys to see that this really isn't that hard, right? It's more procedural. Um, we are good at 105 if we use 1 watt to 100 amps. But that only takes care of the fact that we have uh, seven current carrying conductors in the conduit. So we're good adjusting for that heat. But now we still got to find that correction factor because I went ahead and said that we're going to be running through uh, an attic that could reach 128 degrees. So now we need to take this 105 that we found off the 1 watt that we think is good and figure out 128 degrees. All right, we're dealing with USC. Let's find that first. So I got USE is in the 75 degree chart. So I'm going to come down to USE or to the 75 chart, okay? And I believe we said we're at 128. So I'm going to look for 128. 128 falls between 123 and 131. So I'm going to come over to the 75 degree chart, and that's a 0.67 correction factor. So I'm only allowed to use 67% of this 105 amps we just found. Okay, so I got my 105, my 105, and now I'm gonna multiply that by 0.67 equals 70.35 amps, okay? Again, that's a far cry from the 100 we're looking for. So I gotta keep going up. So I know that the next size is number two. Number two is good to 175 amps. Quite a jump, but I don't think it's going to be enough. But we don't know until we do the math. Now notice here that I'm going back to the adjustment factor. I have to start with the adjustment factor before I can go to the correction factor in this case. 175 times 0.7 equals 122.5. Right? I'm not surprised that that does work out for us but I still have to supply this correction factor of 0.67, and now that is only worth 82.075 amps. So again, not enough for our 100 amps. So now I gotta go to our number three, aught U-S-E, okay? And it says here that number three is good to 200 amps. It's quite a jump, huh? 200 amps times 0.7 is equal to, all right, 200 times 0.7 equals 140 amps. All right, again, we know that that's good enough to correct for the, or the adjustment factor, but will it be enough for the correction factor? Let's see. So now we're going to take that 140 times 0.67 equals 93.8. Still not good enough. Okay? But I'm hoping you guys are seeing the pattern. I kind of like that we did this long one here. Now we're up to a 4 watt. Number 4 watt USE is good to 230 amps. That's a lot of amps. In the perfect condition. So 230 times 0.7 equals 161. Again, we know it was good. Will it be good after we supply the correction factor? Times 0.67 equals 107.87 amps. Okay, so now I think we're good. 107 is exceeds the amperage rating of 100 that we need. So for this question, all right, to answer it, we need a number 4 aught 4 dash 0 u s e c o p p e r copper okay um this really isn't very hard right um it's about knowing where to find the information on these tables we start off with the 310 15 b16 then we apply adjustment factor if we need to and we apply uh, correction factor if we need to, okay? It's important that you just see how this stuff links up. Once you figure that stuff up, it's just a procedural process of 
starting with what works all the way down or what you think will work all the way till you find what actually works. Um, as you get better at these, you'll probably start being able to guesstimate um, kind of where you're going to be, but you should always check. You never want to remember copper costs money. So when we're sizing for jobs, we don't want to overestimate too big and just say it doesn't matter. We want to make sure we pick the closest one that goes over the amperage rating. Okay. Um, so I hope this helped. Uh, adjustment and correction factors applied. Good luck.